Welcome to the International Drive community. This is the heart of one of the busiest destinations in the world. For the past 30 years, the iDrive Business Improvement District has taken on numerous projects to keep the area up to date. Visitors from around the world come here to work, play, and enjoy. The iDrive District continues their work to ensure that this highly sought after resort area stays progressive. From public transit with the iRide trolley, exclusive to iDrive, to the lush landscaping, these projects keep this community looking great and firing on all cylinders. There are more than 800 businesses that make up the iDrive corridor and more than 19,000 full-time residents. Whether it is tracking new development, marketing and promotion, or keeping visitors and locals informed, the iDrive Business Improvement District does it all. And to keep you informed, the iDrive District presents this very first transportation webinar. We'll show you the latest details on current improvement projects straight from the experts who are working on them. Good morning, my name is Luann Brooks and I'm the Executive Director for the International Drive Business Improvement District. Welcome to our Transportation and Transit Initiatives webinar program. I'm often asked, what's all that construction for? Or when will that new road be finished? We decided to bring it all together for you for this first episode of our webinar series. Today, you will learn details about many different dynamic projects that will positively impact the iDrive district in the coming years all of which will help enhance the vehicular and pedestrian experience in our area. With this in mind, let's get started. First up is Mr. Brian Saunders with Orange County to tell you about the proposed pedestrian bridge at Sand Lake Road and International Drive. Hi, I'm Brian Sanders with Orange County's Transportation Planning Division. I'm here to present the International Drive Sand Lake Road Pedestrian Bridge Feasibility Study the following presentation introduces a feasibility study for one of the four gateway features located in the International Drive District as contemplated in the International Drive 2040 plan. The International Drive Sand Lake Road Pedestrian Bridge study includes the development of a preliminary design concept that provides safety, convenience, opportunities for an interactive space and access for multimodal users. FDOT recently completed the widening of Sand Lake Road from the Florida's Turnpike to the International Drive Corridor. Widening included the reconstruction of the International Drive and Sand Lake Road intersection. As you can see in this photo, improvements were made to the in intersection at International Drive and Sand Lake Road. Pedestrian facilities were added and roadway capacity was added as well. The pedestrian gateway project consists and identified in the iDrive 2040 vision plan. Orange County has selected a consultant to evaluate a pedestrian bridge at the intersection of Sand Lake Road and International Drive. That study will include a public involvement program. We will be assembling a project advisory group for leaders in the area to participate. Data collection in the intersection area will also be a part of that study. There's also a technical analysis that includes soil uh, penetration as well as traffic evaluation. Architectural renderings will also be uh, evaluated and provided as part of the study. And we'll also be evaluating the right-of-way acquisition needed for this project. Orange County is currently in the study phase for the pedestrian bridge. We anticipate that this study will be completed by the fall of 2022. Following the study phase, there will be a design phase, a right-of-way phase, and a construction phase. Thanks for the update, Brian. Now, can you tell us more about what's happening with the Trade Show Boulevard Analysis Project? Thanks, Luann. The next presentation will be discussing the Trade Show Boulevard Roadway Conceptual Analysis Study. The Trade Show Boulevard Roadway Conceptual Analysis Study has been implemented with the intent of applying a comprehensive interdisciplinary approach, combining the strengths and the energy 
and transportation planning disciplines in the initial development phases for one of Orange County's major roadway improvement projects. The interdisciplinary approach also seeks to ensure early and systematic coordination with all the affected county departments and divisions, the appropriate state and local entities, and the citizenry. The outline is gonna discuss the background for the project, the purpose and need that was established during the study, the alternative analysis that was conducted, the recommendation of the concept, public involvement, and what are the next steps? The Trade Show Boulevard Corridor was constructed to serve the Convention Center's north-south concourses, parking, and freight access. The road includes two travel lanes posted at 35 miles an hour. It has no bicycle facilities. It does include a, a stormwater culvert crossing and is located within a 60-foot easement. The Trade Show Boulevard RCA was intended to provide additional roadway infrastructure capacity, connectivity, and a transit bridge between the Kirkman Road extension and the proposed transit hub on Destination Parkway. Data collection activities included coordination with the Kirkman Road extension team and Orange County's iDrive transit lane team. The Trade Show Boulevard team also collected corridor-specific information on the existing and projected traffic data, utilities, and drainage patterns. The alternative analysis included several road alignments and typical sections that were developed to accommodate a four-lane road, transit lanes, and a freight staging area with an access lane. Roadway drainage was also calculated and accommodated as well as the cost for each alternative. The right-of-way needs of the alternatives and the recommended improvement were documented and presented to a project advisory group as well as in community meetings and public hearings. In terms of the purpose and need for the project, it was to improve the linkage between Universal Boulevard and Destination Parkway, increase capacity to future accommodate automobiles, freight, and transit demands, as well as address existing safety and enhancement concerns. Part of the alternatives analysis was to look at the traffic demand along the corridor. Currently, there are 20,000 vehicles per day on average using the Trecho Boulevard corridor. The study team looked at two alternatives, a four lane plus two lanes of transit, as well as a six lane plus two lanes of transit. After the analysis was completed, it was determined that a four-lane roadway with two lanes of transit would satisfy the travel demand for the future. As you can see, the alternatives were evaluated in detail. Alternative one was the recommended improvement, which included a low wetland impact, more protected bike ped crossing locations, no right turn transit conflicts, and the transit was aligned for Kirkman Road and the Link Superstop. Here we show the recommended concept plan for Trade Show Boulevard. It includes two travel lanes in each direction, two transit lanes in the center of the travel lanes, as well as 10-foot multi-purpose paths on each side. And on the north end of the alignment, we developed a freight staging area and access lane. The public involvement effort for this project utilized many of the aspects of the transit feasibility and alternative technology assessment study, which included the formation of a project advisory group, small group meetings, community meetings. We also utilized a website and sent newsletters out to notify the public. Next steps for this project. Orange County BCC approved the study on July 27, 2021 and allowed us to proceed with design, right-of-way acquisition, and construction. In the design phase, funding will be available in October of 2021. We will develop and advertise RFP packages to select a consultant for that design phase. We intend to accelerate right-of-way acquisition in 2022 to 2024 
in order to target construction to align with the Kirkman Road extension in 2024 to 2026. Great update, Brian. Next, we have Ms. Kathy Evangelo with Orange County to talk about the planned Sand Lake Road Safety Improvements Project. Hi, I'm Kathy Evangelo. I'm a senior engineer with Orange County Public Works, and today I will be presenting our Sand Lake Road Safety Improvement Project. The project limits are from south of Popka Vineland Road to Turkey Lake Road, which is approximately 1.3 miles in length. The study phase has been completed and we are in the early stages of design. The study focus was to balance the needs of all users, including automobiles, pedestrians, cyclists, transit, and freight. The study stressed safety and mobility. Today I am going to discuss the existing conditions, proposed improvements, and coordination with the Florida Department of Transportation. The FDOT Sand Lake Road I-4 interchange project is adjacent to the east end of our project. First up, we have the existing conditions. The corridor is a four-lane divided roadway with frequent right turn lanes. There are five-foot sidewalks on both sides of the roadway, but no dedicated bike lanes or transit. The median is a mix of curb and flush edges, and there is a mix of open and closed drainage. The existing condition of the Fountains Plaza Venezia driveways is an uncontrolled median opening as shown here. The study reviewed alternatives to alleviate conflicts which currently exist at this median opening to allow users safer turning opportunities. This slide shows the existing conditions of the west side of the corridor. There are five foot wide sidewalks on both sides and frequent right turn lanes in the westbound direction. The study concluded that the existing conditions along the corridor necessitates improvements based on several factors, including travel time savings, completeness of streets, pedestrian and bicycle safety, and drainage accommodations. Additionally, current and proposed traffic demand suggest the need to increase vehicular capacity along this corridor. These are the proposed improvements based on our study. The study showed the largest traffic volume is on the east end of the corridor with approximately one third of westbound traffic turning right onto northbound Dr. Phillips Boulevard. Based on this, the corridor was split into east and west with different improvements based on needs for each section. The west side is from south of Popka Vineland Road to Dr. Phillips Boulevard. The east side is from Dr. Phillips Boulevard to the Rialto just west of Turkey Lake Road as shown here in yellow hatching on the map. The remaining area from the Rialto to Turkey Lake Road will be part of the FDOT Sand Lake Road interchange improvements at I-4 and will be discussed at the end of this presentation. Based on the higher traffic volumes on the east section and the higher amount of crashes per the study, there are more recommended improvements on this east side of the corridor. The bottom figure shows the proposed typical section for the east side of the corridor. There are three lanes proposed in both east and westbound direction and a 10 foot wide shared juice path on the south side of Sand Lake Road. Here's a plan view for the east side improvements. The new continuous right turn lanes are shown here in blue as additional pavement. There will also be a new westbound left turn lane as shown here in yellow. The 10 foot wide shared juice path on the south side of Sand Lake Road is shown here in orange. This shared juice path will be throughout the limits of the project, both east and west. These improvements will reduce stop and go traffic congestion, improving the safety of automobile and pedestrian movement. The study proposed two options for the Fountains Plaza Venezia median opening. A signal warrant study was completed and the signal at the Fountains Plaza Venezia driveway was warranted. So option two for a new signal was chosen. This slide summarizes the improvements for the east side of the corridor. As discussed, there will be new westbound left turn lane new continuous right turn lanes, new pedestrian island at Dr. Phillips Boulevard, milling and resurfacing, a new signalized intersection at the Fountains Plaza Venezia driveways, and the 10 foot wide shared juice path on the south side of the Sand Lake Road. This will be a dedicated non-automotive facility, improving the walking and bicycling experience in the corridor. Here is a rendering of the new signalized intersection at the Fountains and Plaza Venezia driveways. The new signal will include crosswalks, curb ramps, and pedestrian push buttons. This is the west side of the corridor from south of Popka Vineland Road to Dr. Phillips Boulevard, as shown hatched in yellow. 
With approximately one third of the traffic turning right onto northbound Dr. Phillips Boulevard, less improvements were needed on this section. Improvements will include median curbs, milling and resurfacing, the 10-foot shared use path along the south side of Sand Lake Road, and possibly some drainage improvements. The typical section shows two lanes with existing right turn lanes in westbound direction. There will be no lanes added on this west section. The only change to the typical section is the shared use path. Here's a rendering of the west side of the corridor with the 10-foot shared use path along the south side of Sand Lake Road. Design will be completed on our Sand Lake Road safety improvement project by late 2022. No right away is needed for this project. Construction is scheduled for mid-2023 through mid to late 2024. The maintenance of traffic plan will ensure access for all businesses along the corridor during construction. And finally, we have the FDOT coordination for the interchange project at Sand Lake Road and I-4. The 10-foot wide shared use path from our Sand Lake Road safety improvement project will continue through the interchange. This will be a divergent diming interchange, which is somewhat new to our area, but becoming more common. They can look a little odd at first, but they are easy to navigate once you use one. They allow left turn lanes that do not cross oncoming traffic. This decreases the number of conflict points, which increases safety compared to a more traditional interchange. The divergent diamond interchange will move almost double the traffic through the intersection in the same amount of time as the existing interchange. Another change will be no left turns from westbound Sand Lake Road to southbound Turkey Lake Road. Instead, drivers exiting the Divergent Diamond Interchange westbound that want to head southbound on Turkey Lake Road will use a loop access ramp as shown in the photos. Westbound motorists will take the access ramp on the right, the access ramp loops around, passes over Sand Lake Road, and leads to south of the Phillips Crossing Shopping Center forming a new intersection with Turkey Lake Road. From the end of this access ramp, motorists can choose to travel north or south on Turkey Lake Road. This project will also include aesthetic improvements, including landscaping. This is a design-build project by FDOT. Construction is currently scheduled to start in late 2022. This concludes my presentation. I hope you found it informative, and I look forward to seeing you on the Shared Use Path. And we look forward to its completion, Kathy. Now, let's hear from Mr. Renzo Nastasi with Orange County to present the update on the Kirkman Road Extension Project. Hello, I'm Renzo Nastasi, the Transportation Planning Manager for Orange County. This presentation will entail the status of the Kirkman Road Extension. As many of you may know, the Kirkman Road Extension has been contemplated for many years, in fact, well over two decades. This project was first identified in the Orange County Long Range Transportation Plan in the year 2000. Following the adoption of the Comprehensive Plan and the inclusion of the Kirkman Road Extension into the Comprehensive Plan, the Board of County Commissioners in 2007 entered into an agreement with Lockheed Martin to basically lay out the further lay out the concept of the Kirkman Road Extension, basically detailing out the general time frame for the improvement and the roles and responsibilities dealing with the design phases, the right-of-way phases, and the construction phases. Following the approval of the Kirkman Road Extension uh, Agreement between Lockheed Martin and Orange County, a separate agreement was entered into between the Florida Department of Transportation and Universal Studios, who had taken over the planning phases of the Kirkman Road Extension. In fact, the Florida Department of Transportation conducted a public workshop in November of 2018. That public hearing uh, basically entailed the details of the extension, essentially the limits as well as the general alignment of the roadway. Following that public hearing, uh, Orange County entered into a memorandum of understanding with Universal Studios to basically again lay out the design, engineering, and permitting processes for the construction project. Essentially, the Memorandum of Understanding laid out that Universal Studios would donate the right-of-way to Orange County upon completion of the project. And it also included a general schedule for the construction of Kirkman Road. 
On December 2019, the Orange County Board of County Commissioners approved the roadway infrastructure agreement between Universal City Development Partners and Orange County for the extension of Kirkman Road. In addition, uh, the Department of Economic Opportunity, um, through the Florida Job Growth Infrastructure Grant, provided an additional $16 million towards the construction of Kirkman Road. More specifically, the $60 million were, was targeted towards the interchange at Sand Lake and Kirkman Road. The Kirkman Road extension is intended to provide for another north-south corridor, which facilitates regional travel and also provides for additional access to the convention center and other developments in the area. Of course, there have been major investments by both Orange County, Universal, Universal and the Department of Economic Opportunity. Other developments in the area, of course, will benefit uh, f from this project. For example, the Orange County Convention Center, Lockheed Martin, UCF Rosen, Universal Studios, Wyndham, Top Golf, Hilton the Hilton Expansion, the Andretti Attraction, Icon Orlando, and Point Orlando are all important developments that will benefit from this project. In terms of major investments that are underway within the International Drive area, the Orange County Convention Center is planning to expand an additional 2,000 square foot of, multi of a multi-purpose venue. Also a new 80,000 square foot ballroom and a 60,000 square foot meeting room. In the past, the Convention Center has attracted 1.4 million attendees per year, and we would expect that that level of attendees will continue to grow throughout the years. In addition, Lockheed Martin has also plans to expand a 255,000 square foot office space on their property. Other major inv investments include the, Universal, the University of Central Florida Rosa School of Hospitality with a new 50,000 square foot building. And of course, Universal City Development Partners has a future development of 758 developable acres that will host a new attraction. Now, specifically to the roadway itself, the project limits extend from Universal Boulevard to Carrier Drive, a length of approximately 1.7 miles. The new interchange configuration at Sand Lake Road will be part of this major improvement. In addition to the interchange reconfiguration, Stormwater treatment will be provided along with bus lanes, bike lanes, pedestrian facilities, lighting. In terms of jurisdiction, the Orange County portion under the county's jurisdiction lies from south of Universal Boulevard to the southern ramps of it, the interchange. The DOT jurisdiction limits are from the southern ramps to Carrier Drive. The typical section the, in, within the Florida Department of Transportation's section um, include uh, two dedicated bus lanes, 12-foot multi-purpose paths, bike lanes and sidewalks. Sand Lake Road interchange reconfiguration will also be part of the Florida Department of Transportation jurisdictional limits. The typical section within the Orange County section is very similar to the Florida Department of Transportation. Again, with two dedicated bus lanes, four general travel lanes, a 12-foot multi-purpose path, and bike lanes and sidewalk. Finally, the Kirkman Road extension, again, extending from Universal Boulevard to Carrier, Carrier Drive is currently underway in terms of utility work, which began in the winter of last year. The construction notice to proceed was issued in September of 2020. Roadway work is scheduled to begin in August of 2021, and final completion is anticipated to take place in the spring of 2025. And again, I hope you found this presentation helpful. Thank you. Very helpful. Thank you, Renzo. Back over to Mr. Saunders. Can you share more on the International Drive Transit Lanes project with an update on the iDrive Transit Feasibility Assessment Study? Thanks, Luann. The next set of presentations includes the International Drive Transit Lanes and the Transit Feasibility and Alternative Technology Assessment Study. We're gonna talk about the backgrounds for the transit lane project, the objectives that we're trying to achieve, current status of the project, and what are the next steps followed by the Tifada Premium Transit Study. Multiple studies have recommended transit as a solution to satisfy concerns for congestion in the iDrive corridor. 
The project that we're describing today is from Destination Parkway to Sand Lake Road with a spur from Via Mercado to Universal Boulevard up to Sand Lake Road. You can see that on the map on the right. Currently, the iDrive Transit Feasibility and Alternative Technology Assessment recommends the ultimate premium transit system that will operate in these lanes. The objectives of the project are to relieve convention center congestion, to accommodate the iRide trolley, links, and charter buses, as well as form a connector to future convention center circulators. The existing typical section of International Drive is shown on the left. There's two travel lanes in each direction, a very wide median, and sidewalks on both sides. The transit lane project will reduce the median width to allow outside transit lanes to be constructed. The transit lanes will be semi-exclusive and will be shared at intersections where turning, right turning vehicles will need to access the lane as well. The current status of the project is we're in the process of updating the construction plans. That includes underground utility locates, topo survey updates, addressing ADA deficiencies, as well as updating easement documents and finalizing the landscape design package. This project also includes enhanced landscaping. As you can see, it's to a greater degree than we normally do on roadway projects to match the existing character of the area. Easement documents throughout the corridor are being reestablished. New easement donations are required for traffic signals, signs, and transit shelters. We're also forming partnerships with stakeholders for donations of these easements and right-of-way entries for both iDrive Transit Lanes and the Premium Transit Project. Donations for easements and is critical for this project to move forward into the construction phase. During construction, it's important to note that business entrances and side streets have been designed to stay open during the entire construction progress. The next step for this project includes finalization of the construction plans and including the enhanced landscape package, obtaining donations for easements. We anticipate the construction to start in 2022 we're working with the convention center to accommodate large conventions and events, as well as maintenance of vehicle and pedestrian traffic, mitigation of construction impacts, and continued stakeholder coordination. Now I'm gonna move on to the Tifada Premium Transit Study. The following presentation describes the background and process taken to introduce a premium transit system into the transit lane corridor that will be constructed in the iDrive district. The International Drive Transit Feasibility and Alternative Technology Assessment Study is consistent with the International Drive 2040 Vision Plan, where premium transit mode is envisioned to advance the iDrive district's goal of competitiveness, compatibility to a diverse marketplace, and the promotion of a sustainable economic development. We're going to talk about the background of the study, the study analysis, the recommendations, the public involvement that was conducted, and what are the next steps to move forward. The study area for this project includes International Drive from Sea Harbor Drive to Sand Lake Road, Via Mercado from I Drive to Universal Boulevard, Destination Parkway from International Drive to Trade Show Boulevard, Trade Show Boulevard from Destination Parkway to Universal Boulevard, Universal Boulevard from Trade Show Boulevard to Sand Lake Road, and we also incorporate the results of the Kirkman Road Extension Project, which runs from Universal Boulevard to Carrier Drive. The district is served by five regular Lynx bus routes, which run between 15 and 30 minute frequencies for daytime and reduced service at night. The iRide trolley has reestablished normal operations daily between 8 a.m. and 10.30 p.m. The surface extends from the factory outlets in the south to Universal Studios in the north. 
The length of the routes are approximately 11 miles and include 100 stops. The Convention Center Master Plan also contemplated a planned campus circulator that was also considered during the study. The first phase of premium transit technology was analyzed and included the selection of the most appropriate transit route, shown on the slide on the left, selection of the vehicle technology, the selection of a service alignment, either curbside or median running, the selection of a transit hub, and determination of the transit service parameters and viable funding sources. The recommended system is a premium bus transit system operating on International Drive from Sand Lake Road to Sea Harbor Drive, including a spur on Destination Parkway. This premium bus system would operate within the iDrive Transit Lane project in the curbside traffic lane. It will also operate in mixed traffic at intersections to facilitate right-turning passenger vehicles and on destination parkway to access the transportation hub, as well as on iDrive south of destination parkway to and along Sea Harbor Drive to the proposed southern end terminus at SeaWorld. Premium bus vehicles and their modern technology was determined to be the most compatible with the character and needs of the study area. Premium buses available in today's U.S. transit market offer many of the exterior and interior qualities of modern rail vehicles with capital and O&M costs that are significantly lower compared to a modern streetcar. In addition, premium buses provide similar levels of service and rider comfort, as well as increased flexibility and adaptability. The premium transit stations are located approximately a quarter mile apart, and therefore, you will have no more than a three minute walk from most places to any station. The stations are located where people want to go, and all the stations are co-located with link stops. The Transit Hub is located at Orange County's Destination Parkway, Intermodal Station, and co-located with Lynx Superstop. The proposed transit system would operate on a 10-minute frequency from 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. seven days a week. Transit signal phasing is assumed at key intersections to facilitate smooth transit operations. Based on the vehicle running time and the estimated round trip cycle, the operating plan assumes that seven peak vehicles will be needed to maintain the 10-minute headways. Applying a 30% spare ratio, the operating plan assumes that a total fleet of 10 premium bus vehicles will be required for the service. The estimated capital and operating costs for the proposed transit system are presented in the tables. The level of design is still conceptual and most capital cost estimates are included as allowances until further analysis and design can identify more accurate estimates. The capital costs are estimated at $83 million, and that includes the $22 million needed for the interim transit lane project that I just spoke about before. The operating costs are estimated in 2020 dollars and are $4.8 million. Applying estimated trip ridership against current Lynx average fare per person shows the estimated revenue per passenger and annual net operating costs of $3.4 million annually. Premium bus alternatives and estimated O&M costs are about half the estimated cost for streetcar alternatives and those came in around $280 million in present day value. The U.S. DOT supports public transit projects through federal transit administration programs. The state and local transportation providers have mechanisms to assess multimodal funding for FHWA programs. Federal sources that may support the proposed premium transit project are presented in the table. The FDOT plays an important role in funding premium transit projects across the state. FDOT administers discretionary and formula-based funding programs 
that may support the proposed premium transit project. Some of the factors that are considered uh, to support this project is that we feel the transit lane project can leverage funding uh, for the premium transit product. And the FTA project development process requires oversight and project evaluation where the competition for funds is stiff and the following process doesn't guarantee ultimate FTA approval. The public involvement process was quite broad. It included a project advisory group with over 50 members representing key stakeholders throughout the corridor and the iDrive district. We conducted four meetings with this group between December 2019 and July 2020. We also coordinated with agencies including Orange County, public schools, the state, and the city of Orlando. We had many small group meetings with the iDrive Chamber, the Improvement District, the CRA, and others. Two community meetings were held along with two public hearings, both announced with public newsletters and a pub project website. Next steps for the project. The Orange County Board of County Commissioners approved this study on July 27, 2021 and allowed us to proceed with design, right-of-way acquisition, and construction. Additional steps include coordination with links to formulate a memorandum of understanding to operate the future system. They are the best suited in the area for this project. Coordination with the iDrive Improvement District, the iRide Trolley, as well as the continued coordination with the iDrive Transit Lane project. We'll further partner with Lynx to apply for federal and state funding and identify local funds as needed. We will also make sure that this project is included in Metro Plan's Transportation Improvement Program and FDOT's five-year work program. Additional funding is available this fall to complete the project development phase. Following that phase, we will conclude the other phases, which include design, right-of-way, and construction. And that is the end of this presentation. Last up, but certainly not least, is an update from our partners at the Florida Department of Transportation regarding the I-4 Beyond the Ultimate project. Thank you for watching this update on the I-4 Beyond the Ultimate program from the Florida Department of Transportation. We're excited to share with you the project's plan for the I-4 corridor in South Orange County and Osceola County. I-4 was built for a different era and a very different place. In 1965, when I-4 was first opened to motorists, Metro Orlando, the area between Sanford and Kissimmee, was home to only around 200,000 people. That same area now holds more than 2.5 million people. I-4 was also built for different vehicles and built to different safety standards, which is well illustrated by the State Trooper's classic car here. As times change, so must roadways. To improve safety and mobility in Central Florida, FDOT is creating a more efficient transportation network by providing necessary improvements on I-4 north and south of the I-4 Ultimate project. Three major I-4 interchange projects are on the way. Construction on the I-4 and County Road 532 interchange near Champions Gate in Osceola County began July 2021. In 2022, work will begin on reconstructing the interchange at Sand Lake Road, State Road 482, and a new interchange will be constructed at the I-4 overpass at Darrell Carter Parkway. All three of these projects are innovative interchanges known as a Diverging Diamond Interchange, or DDI. Later in the presentation, we will explain in depth how this type of interchange works and the benefits of it. Let's talk more specifically about the improvements coming to I-4. As mentioned, the I-4 and County Road 532 interchange work began in July 2021. On the screen is a rendering of the project. In addition to the new DDI, the project also improves all the interchange ramps. The westbound I-4 entrance ramp will have two lanes to accommodate single right and left turn lanes from County Road 532. The eastbound I-4 exit ramp will have three lanes to accommodate single right and two left turn lanes from County Road 532. The eastbound I-4 entrance ramp is expanded to three lanes to accommodate dual left turns and a single right turn from County Road 532. The westbound I-4 exit ramp is expanded to four lanes to provide dual right and left turn lanes onto County Road 532. 
let's take a closer look at the new I-4 and County Road 532 interchange. Diverging diamond interchanges are used all around the world, built where interstates meet busy local roadways. DDIs help improve safety and mobility for drivers, pedestrians, and bicyclists. A DDI will soon be constructed at the intersection of Interstate 4 and Champions Gate Boulevard, County Road 532. This DDI will be built underneath I-4. This is how a diverging diamond works. As traffic on the local road approaches the interstate, it switches sides at a traffic signal. After traveling over or under the interstate, traffic switches back at another traffic signal. By moving traffic to the other side of the road, the DDI eliminates the need for left turns across oncoming traffic. It also reduces the number of traffic light phases, allowing more cars to travel through the interchange. And when entering the interstate from the local road, drivers are able to make right turns and left turns easily. To learn more about diverging diamond interchanges, visit fdot.tips slash DDI. Another I-4 improvement project is scheduled to start later in 2021 on the west side of Osceola County near Champions Gate. This project will add new eastbound and westbound I-4 auxiliary lanes, one in each direction, between the ramps of State Road 429 and County Road 532 as well as an auxiliary lane continuing northbound State Road 429 to Sinclair Road. FDOT is designing and constructing this project, as well as a project to mill and resurface eastbound and westbound I-4 from the Polk Osceola County line to west of State Road 417 in Osceola County. Darrell Carter Parkway, currently only an overpass, will be reconfigured into an interim diverging diamond interchange with an exit ramp from westbound I-4 and entrance and exit ramps to and from eastbound I-4. This project is anticipated to begin later in 2022. In the full build-out of I-4 Beyond the Ultimate, there will be a westbound I-4 entrance ramp from Darrell Carter Parkway, but it will be constructed as part of a later project. The new I-4 and Darrell Carter Parkway interchange will give motorists an alternate route to reach retailers and restaurants in the Lake Buena Vista area. Let's take a closer look on how this new interchange will operate. A DDI will soon be constructed at the intersection of Interstate 4 and Darrell Carter Parkway. This DDI will be built over I-4. This is how a diverging diamond works. As traffic on the local road approaches the interstate, it switches sides at a traffic signal. After traveling over or under the interstate, traffic switches back at another traffic signal. By moving traffic to the other side of the road, the DDI eliminates the need for left turns across oncoming traffic. It also reduces the number of traffic light phases, allowing more cars to travel through the interchange. And when exiting the interstate onto the local road, drivers are able to make right turns and left turns easily. For more information about diverging diamond interchanges, visit fdot.tips slash DDI. In 2022, reconstruction of the I-4 and Sand Lake Road interchange is anticipated to begin. Here's a rendering of the future DDI at Sand Lake Road. You can see the traffic on Sand Lake will switch as motorists travel under the I-4 overpass. This is a modified DDI because the project also includes an access loop ramp, taking traffic coming westbound on Sand Lake Road and traffic on westbound I-4 directly onto southbound Turkey Lake Road on the other side of the Phillips Crossing shopping plaza. This traffic pattern removes the left turn from westbound Sand Lake Road onto southbound Turkey Lake Road. This intersection, which many motorists use to turn left onto Turkey Lake, often creates backups on westbound Sand Lake Road and westbound I-4 due to the proximity of the intersection to the westbound I-4 exit ramp. This new traffic pattern will allow motorists to access Turkey Lake Road directly from westbound I-4 or from the access loop ramp on the right-hand side of westbound Sand Lake Road. This new traffic pattern should ease the flow of motorists coming off westbound I-4 and merging with the traffic on westbound Sand Lake Road, eliminating backups on the westbound I-4 exit ramp, which sometimes can stretch all the way back to the westbound I-4 mainline. 
Unlike a conventional interchange, the lanes in a DDI cross over to the opposite side of the roadway. That limits the number of traffic signal phases and allows drivers to make a left turn without crossing in front of oncoming traffic. The lanes then change back to the right side of the road. Central Florida's first diverging diamond interchange opened at I-95 and Viero Boulevard in July 2019. Let's explore more on how a DDI functions. Traffic cross paths as they travel through or turn from one route to another. Areas where different paths separate, cross, or join are known as conflict points, and these are always present at intersections. Limiting the number of conflict points at an intersection not only reduces the frequency and severity of crashes, but also improves the overall operation and mobility. The illustration on the left of your screen depicts a standard diamond interchange, which has 18 crossing and merging conflict points. The illustration on the right shows a generic DDI, which cuts the number of conflict points by more than half. For a further explanation of how a DDI can improve traffic flow when an interstate highway meets a busy local roadway, let's check out some examples from other parts of Florida and the country. The I-4 Beyond the Ultimate Construction Project is going to include several innovative interchange designs. One of those is called a Diverging Diamond Interchange, or DDI. The first Diverging Diamond Interchange in Florida opened in May of 2017, here in Sarasota at the intersection of I-75 and University Parkway. DDIs are used all around the world, built where interstates meet busy local roadways. DDIs help improve safety and traffic flow in several ways. This is how a diverging diamond works. As traffic on the local road approaches the interstate, it switches sides at a traffic signal. After traveling over or under the interstate, traffic switches back at another traffic signal. By moving traffic to the other side of the road, the DDI eliminates the need for left turns across oncoming traffic. It also reduces the number of traffic light phases, allowing more cars to travel through the interchange. And when exiting the interstate onto the local road, drivers are able to make right turns and left turns easily, as you can see here. DDIs also reduce the number of conflict points or places where vehicles cross paths. As you can see here, a conventional diamond interchange has 10 conflict points. The diverging diamond reduces those conflict points to only two. This will enhance safety at the intersection for drivers and pedestrians. A diverging diamond interchange is designed to be intuitive to drive through. You just follow your lanes. Advanced signs, signals, and pavement markings will help guide you through the intersection. So it makes the DDI a much safer and more efficient interchange. Several diverging diamond interchanges are planned along the I-4 corridor. To learn more about diverging diamonds, visit the special features page on i4beyond.com. There you can also learn more about the entire I-4 Beyond the Ultimate project. This concludes our webinar for today. As you've learned, the International Drive District area will see many exciting improvements in the near future. I certainly hope that you found this to be an informative experience. Should you have any comments or questions, please feel free to email me at events at idrivedistrict.com. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to sharing more updates with you soon. Have a great day.